and now an exploration of the contenders for the title of torpedo bomber. To start with, torpedo bombing for the Germans was usually a matter for medium bombers. However, they did explore a dedicated reconnaissance torpedo bomber just for the Kraft Zeppelin. First was the Arado 95, of which 42 were made and would serve largely as a float plane. With a single forward and single trainable machine gun, a range of 680 miles, and a speed twice that of the Navalai Stuka, and nowhere near the weight, she could also deliver over 1,500 pounds of ordnance, which would either be a single torpedo or a mix of bombs, mines, depth charges, and other ordnance of varying weights. Six had served in the Legion Condor and had done well, and another six had been purchased by Chile. In 1939, they equipped Baltic coastal squadrons. She would inspire the Arado AR-195, of which only three were made, first flying in 1937. Resembling the ferry Albacore, if nothing else, she had a speed comparable to the AR-95 at 180 miles per hour, but a shorter range of only 404 miles, and an identical payload and defensive armament. Her in the end, it would be the third entry for torpedo bomber that would win. The Fisela Fi-167 was decided upon, and 14 would be made. First flying in 1938, a year after catapults and landing trials had begun with the other three aircraft, she had a sleek airframe and an 1,100-horsepower DB-601B inverted V-12. With what was by comparison an incredible range, she could cruise 808 miles at 160 miles per hour without a drop tank. The same 1,540-pound torpedo or equivalent in ordnance could be carried. Agile and adaptable, she would have proven a useful tactical asset had a carrier been available for her to serve. The two prototypes and 12 pre-production models were deployed in the Netherlands for reconnaissance duties in 1940, before being returned in 1943 to Budweis for testing at the Deutsche Versuchsanstalt für Luftfahrt. The nine which had served in the Netherlands were then sold to the Croatian ZNDH, and eventually all but two would end up with them. There she served well in the niche role of mountain resupply in the Yugoslav hills, putting to good use her short takeoff and landing qualities. While some sources mention her being sold to Romania, I saw no substantive report for this in my research. However, what is recorded is that the final biplane kill of the war was likely in a Fee 167, when Croatian ace Bozidar Bartolovic's rear gunner damaged a Mustang, which would then crash, although Bartolovic would lose his right eye in the exchange. The story is told well by Frank Josef in the Axis Air Forces, flying in support of the German Luftwaffe, an enjoyable book on Germany's Eastern European allies and their air forces. As this last photo shows, some survived to be used by the post-war communist Yugoslavian Air Force.